Okay. Um, I'm Troy Dawson. Hey, everyone. I'm Carl George. Can you hear Carl? It's coming through fine. Okay, good. Um, I'm the Apple Steering Committee Chair, and you are? An engineer in CPE, the Community Platform Engineering Group with Inside Red Hat. Yep. And we're here to talk about the state of Apple. Uh, I, I did have one person comment that for those of you who don't know who, what Apple is, it's extra packages for enterprise Linux. So CentOS Stream and RHEL has all these packages, and there's so many more in the rest of the world. <laughs> and it's not just me and Carl doing it. Uh, it, it is a community project. Uh, it's in the Fedora branch of things. Okay, we like to start off with numbers. Uh, we have two types of, of numbers here. These are these first ones are unique IP addresses seen daily per release. Uh, this is uh, Matt Matt Miller's Velociraptorizer. Um, these are fun. I like to watch the stack mainly because we get to see how many we didn't reach five million yet. Uh, we we got close. We're a little over four and a half million right now. Uh, these are funner to see because it's broken down by release. And again, this is unique IP addresses. So if you got a NAT or something else, you count as one. Um, Apple 7 is still pretty high up there. Uh, we're pretty sure this was Amazon Linux, this big spike. Uh, it's sort of fun to see that CentOS Linux 6 is still pretty good. Um, 8. We're, we'll talk more about this little dip in eight. Now, this one, this is Apple 9. Uh, the fun fact is, on August 1st, this month, Apple 9 finally passed Apple 5. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Apple 5 had 18, still has 18,000. And on August 1st, Apple 9 got up to 20,000. Now, this is unique IP addresses. Uh, we're going to, the next slides, now the new way of doing things is DNF count me. And, oh, I don't have the name. Uh, Matt's thing for that is Brontosaurus applicator or something like that. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. I'm not going to pronounce it. Okay, these are, one of the things that his do does, so this is for Apple 9. One of the things his does for Brontosaurus, Matt's wave things. It separates them by em ephemeral. Ephemeral? I got the word right. Which is, think of it as like a CI build. It's just there for a day. It's less Systems than Systems that are a week old or less. Or or less. Well, there's... Do you want to touch on how Count Me works really quick? Yes. I'll help explain the ephemeral part. Why don't you do Count Me? Sure. Because you're a little better at it. So the, uh, the, the previous slides with the mirror check-ins, that was all just based on IP addresses. And we know that that's subject to both overcounting and undercounting uh, between that and other things. CountMe is a new system that got developed in Fedora where systems, it's, it's, uh, you can opt out of it and it's privacy respecting. But basically whenever, once a week, whenever DNFs contacting the repositories, it'll include a, uh, a parameter in the request that says count me and an integer that represents what kind of bucket of systems. It's on a scale. Uh, bucket one is systems that are a week old or less. I don't remember the exact numbers. Oh, there they are, yeah. Um, There's one, I, I think uh, less than first one First week, week is you know one to two weeks, and then two to four, and then five to 24, and then 25 plus. Whenever DNF sends, sends the request, it'll include an integer corresponding to those, so we can kind of see this, the spread of systems over time. And you can do things like, okay, we'll filter out everything that's ephemeral because I care about systems that are installed really in problem. The ephemeral ones oftentimes will be, you know, container workloads or CI systems, things like that. So DNF is a lot better representation of actual usage. Um, yep. It's only, we don't have it for, for seven. It's a newer feature. We have it in eight and nine. Uh, it wasn't in eight at launch. It came, I think 8.3 is whenever it showed up in rel. So, um, uh, we don't have this kind of breakdown for anything for seven, which as you saw in the earlier charts is a big portion of our usage. 
Uh, so it'll be interesting as as we go forward in time, getting everything on Count Me, getting to be able to see better breakdowns and uh, more information. Those requests also include things like the operating system distribution, the um, a few other things. I think it's uh, so length operating system. There is a variant architecture. Oh, architecture, yeah, and something called variant, which isn't used very much. Yes. So that's basically what Count Me is, and so it gives us a lot better a better breakdown of systems. Uh, this one right here is all all of the systems in that are uh, that identify as RHEL nine or RHEL nine compatible. So yeah. they're consuming Apple yeah. nine. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're just looking at Apple. Although you do have a slide. This is the other. age breakdown. Yep. It's it's sort of interesting that although uh, so twenty five weeks is just say six months that uh, we already have. People identifying as Rel nine six months, even though it's only been out for three. Using Apple nine, this is also this is yeah. not just Rel nine systems. This is everything that's consuming Apple nine. Oh, that's right, Apple nine. I, yeah, I said that wrong. Let me break down. So that's the total numbers. So if you remember this first first slide, we said Apple nine finally got up to twenty thousand, but here we clearly see it's up up to forty thousand. Um, but if I like this side because it gives me more of a breakdown of what kind of people are. So clearly, um, Apple nine is used, being used a lot in eph ephemeral, meaning people are testing out nine, but there's still a fair percentage of people that are using that. I don't know production, but well, the enterprise Linux scale is still very new. Yeah. It only came out in real nine came out in May, 20, May this year. Uh, CentOS Stream 9 came out, uh, I think it was December 19th. December last year is when we kind of promoted it as launched. Uh, so it's still relatively new in the enterprise scale. Yep. So let's look at the 8 real quick. 8's fun to look at uh, just because it's crazy. This craziness here happened when, not when CentOS Linux went away, but when they it got taken off the mirrors. CentOS Linux 8. CentOS, CentOS Linux 8. Did I not forget the 8 part? Yeah. Because um, all these people had to like redo all their distributions. Um, it's, and it, the interesting thing is the ephemer, ephemeral things uh, sort of went away with that. I I don't know where people started doing it. They says, hey, we don't want to test with CentOS Linux anymore. So... I'm going to turn it over to you for these ones. Sure. So these are a little bit different charts. They're still created from the same tool, from the same set of tools that Matthew Miller has that he worked on for Fedora. Uh, and you can see here uh, that uh, I mentioned CentOS Stream 9 launching last year. You can see where that started off. And one of the big takeaways I think here is that uh, launching early is better. Uh, the lo longer you're around, you get more adoption. You can see we've still got some uh, some growth of some new rebuild distributions like Alma Linux and Rocky Linux there and or Oracle Linux too. Oh yeah, uh, there's Oracle. Yep, Wait right there at the very bottom. Um, looking at the looking at the raw data, you can <laughs> looking at the raw data, you can see a few other distributions starting to pop up like uh, like Springdale. Um, those will grow over time, and we'll, we'll be able to look. You can look at that breakdown of the data. All the Count Me data is public and available from the Fedora project. So this slide is the persistent. Yeah, oh, yeah. You're, you're I didn't print that out. Your persistent means everything above one week, right? Yes. Yeah, everything. Oh. It corresponds to those same buckets as before. The uh, no ephemeral systems. Everything that's a week older, a week or older. Okay. And this is just for nine. This is we, just can see, we can see that CentOS Stream Nine's up over ten thousand now, and uh, which we like to see that growth. But from the earlier charts, you know that that's a very tiny fraction compared to like you know Apple Seven and Apple Eight even. In the millions, yeah. and even the end of life distribution <laughs> releases. So, here's the ephemeral. Yeah. This is still nine. Uh, is still these are just those systems that are less than a week old. Uh, so, a lot of CI okay. systems, container workloads, things like that. Maybe someone just spun it up to try it out in a VM and then shut it down and never checked in again. This one is interesting that people are using a lot of rel, actual rel. So, these are broken up by things for ephemeral. Mm -hmm. I would have thought they would have done more stream and. But the, I guess maybe they're testing them out. The other know. noticeable thing to me is that it's very very uh, volatile up and down. Oh, yeah. 
Next one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this is the total. This is very similar to mine yeah. with the numbers 16K, but it's got broken These are up. the last two charts added together. Both the this is all systems, persistent and ephemeral. Okay. Sure. So what is this? So this this chart's a little bit of a one off. It's not made for Matthew's tooling. CentOS Stream 9 is the first release that's also in Mirror Manager. So it's the first time we actually have count me data for CentOS. And I've created this chart. I want. I was curious to find out about how many CentOS Stream 9 systems were actually using Apple. So that's what this represents. The top line is just CentOS Stream total numbers, and the bottom line is systems that also have Apple. And comparing those, I always assume that Apple, almost everyone used Apple. It's very popular, and I do think that it's getting to that over time. But what surprised me is that early on, uh, we had very low usage. Uh, in January, only 14% of systems were using Apple um, by about, uh, speaker notes Sorry. are a little bit old. I added some more percentages. Oh. But yeah, around April, we hit about a third of systems. And as of last week, it was, I believe, 40, 43% or 49%. Oh. Cool. So it's still growing over time. Uh, looking at a few other data sets, I know that Alma Linux is also doing Count Me Data for their mirrors. And looking at that, they're near 100% usage of Apple on Alma 8. So I do think that this is going to keep going up over time. Cool. Do you know if Alma Linux or any of the other variants are by default? As far as I know, they're not. I think at one point there was discussions around that, and all of those discussions ended with no. We're trying to be RHEL compatible, and RHEL doesn't enable it by default, so we're not going to either. I think, I think Alm also had a similar discussion around CRB. Uh, there was some somebody wanted to enable it, and then they got backlash that no, no, if you enable that by default, then that's you know one step away from compatibility with RHEL. Most of them do make it easy. So like yeah. CentOS Stream, you can just do DNF install Apple release, but uh, not enabled by default. Yeah, most of the, CentOS and all the new rebuilds, they'll have an extras repo, which is something that CentOS started a long time ago to make it easy to install SIG release packages and also we'll put Apple release in there as well. Okay. If you're on actual real proper, there's no way to do that. You got to go grab the URL, but it's not that hard. So this is eight persistent. Yep. It's eight persistent system. So we mentioned CentOS Stream 9 getting up oh, for Apple systems, getting up over 10,000 and it's just a totally different scale. The <laughs> CentOS Linux 8 systems are, you know, they peaked up over 800,000 there for a while. There's an extra two zeros. <laughs> <laughs> so just the different scales would go back on the older releases. You can see the huge dip there for, for CentOS Linux 8 with whenever it got end of life and taken off the mirrors. And then weirdly, it kept growing after that. Um, people just A lot of people switched to the vault mirrors and just kept using it and ignored our advice that this is no longer maintained, for better or worse. Uh, this other dip is interesting. I don't know what that's from. Yeah, I don't know why there's so much volatility with it now. I mean... I get. I would expect the volatility down as people migrate off of it, not not down and then back up again. But, and you can see that there's the other distributions there at the uh, around the two hundred thousand mark. I think uh, yeah. tussling around a little bit less volatile. But yeah, it's very interesting that CentOS Linux eight is still grew for a while and is still up higher, drastically higher than all these other options that are actually maintained that people should be switching to. Yep. Here's the ephemeral. But they stopped using CentOS Linux for yeah. ephemeral. <laughs> so I, I, at least the message seems to have gotten out for CentOS Linux 8 for, for CI workloads and things like containers. Um, yeah, that drop, that usage dropped off entirely. So those systems on the previous chart, those are long-running systems that more than likely just got switched over to the, to the vault repos to keep consuming CentOS Linux 8 content. Yep. Uh, yeah, there's a lot more volatility on oh. those ephemeral systems spiking Sorry. up and down. Next one. Yeah. There's so a, this is total from the last two slides together, both persistent and ephemeral systems for all of those. Similar trends, trend lines we see from uh, for CentOS Linux 8 still grow, growing not quite as high because of the drop off of ephemeral systems. But that's how the rest of them compare right there. Okay. You want to talk about survey? Survey. Everybody loves a survey. Uh, we wanted to know more about our Apple community. So we've created an Apple survey. Uh, if you're a user, if you're a maintainer, if you're not a user, we don't care. Um, we 
you can tell us why you're not a user. Yeah, we, we questions have questions in there for that. Yep. Um, there's the long thing. The short one is tinyurl.com, Apple Survey 2022. And as people point out, this is a mascot. I think he's cute. <laughs> it's the Apple Elf. Um, all of these, those two links and the QR code all go to the same place. It's not a different survey, by the way. Oh, yeah, they're the same one. We just tried to shorten it because fedoraproject.linequery.com 396. That's really hard to say. Um, anything else about the survey? Oh, the survey is all of August. So if you're watching this on YouTube and it's September, I apologize. We've shut it off. But all of August, uh, we'll be running the survey. But you don't need to go run and do the survey right right this second because it's open until the end of August. Yep. Um, when it's done, we will try to make all the non- write-ins we don't have too many write-ins but we do have one or two uh public um but uh the write-ins will we'll we'll see i'm sure we'll have future conference talks where we talk about insights we gain from the survey we're hoping we can get some good good insights from it to learn and learn how to make apple better yep okay apple nine um we're assuming some of you have watched some of our things, so we're not going to go too far back in Apple 9. We're not going to go about, you know, the January transition and stuff. But if you want to learn more about that, come to my talk on Saturday at DevConf. Yes, that's a very good one. That'll be cool. But the one thing, although we, if you did listen to our last uh, CentOS Dojo talk, we did talk about the launch, but we're going to, we're still excited about it. Uh, Rail 9 launched. Apple 9 was there with the launch with a very big amount of packages. Um, More source RPMs than were in Rail itself at the launch. That's true. That was that was a fun fun number. Uh, we're not we're standing before you. We are not the Apple community. Well, we're part of it. We want to thank all of the Apple community uh, users contributors. It was. It was great. Uh, we, and I know you played a large part, but there's also infrastructure people. A lot of people helped get that set up uh, for Apple 9 for that launch. Um, what did we want to talk about? No. <laughs> Should we say that CentOS Stream 9 goes end of life on 2027? Yeah. <laughs> so... so. So as opposed to CentOS Linux in the past with, with matching the rel, full rel lifecycle with the both the active and the maintenance phases, uh, CentOS Stream 9 just corresponds with rel's active maintenance. So it's only it's about a five and a half year lifecycle for that. Apple 9 Next is going to, uh, we haven't really talked about Apple Next at all. So I can oh, touch on that briefly. Yeah, let's talk about that. So back with during the CentOS Stream 8 days, when that was the most current release, uh, we started noticing a few instances where CentOS Stream would get a library rebase, one of the packages that was a lower compatibility level in the RHEL ACG, the application compatibility guide that Josh talked about. It would get increased to a new version. Uh, one example is QT5 got rebased from, I think, 5.12 to 5.15. Mm -hmm. And that change, it's, it's a fi fine change. Everything in RHEL can get rebuilt to be compatible at the same time whenever it releases there. But those ch that change would hit CentOS Stream 9 early and make some Apple packages not installable. It's not that common. Most of Apple just installs fine on CentOS Stream 9 because of how compatible with RHEL it is. But we wanted to give maintainers a way to fix that for, for the packages that do end up incompatible. So we came up with this idea for Apple Next. The idea was that it would be a small repository that layers on top of Apple where maintainers can do normal Apple builds against RHEL and Apple Next builds against CentOS Stream. So a maintainer of, say, some QT package, or a package that links against QT, could do their rebuild against the new QT 515 and CentOS Stream 9. They could do that rebuild in Apple 9 Next, ship that available to CentOS Stream consumers without disturbing the RHEL users that are getting it from the regular Apple. So, and then after, after you know, three to six months, whenever uh, RHEL catches up to CentOS Stream, then the same build can be done in Apple 9, op, you know, not obsoleting, but uh, with a higher release than what's in Apple 9 next and get everyone realigned back to the same package. Yep. It makes things really nice. 
one of the reasons it came up when we said CentOS Stream 9 is going away is because it's based off of CentOS Stream. That's that build group. So, so when Apple, so when CentOS Stream 8 goes away, Apple Next 8 goes away with it. And Apple 9 Next goes away when CentOS Stream 9. Apple 9 it's, itself, of course, will last yep. through 20, 2032? Yes. For the, for the main real life cycle. Yep. So... One other thing I wanted to bring up is that uh, we had Apple 8, had a modular repo for Apple 8. Oh. For 9, uh, we've decided against doing that in the Apple Steering Committee. Uh, there was just a lot of problems with the with the modularity imp implementation, doing module builds between different Kojis. It's just, in the end, work, talking with Fedora Release Engineering, who'd actually have to shoulder the maintenance of it, uh, we decided that based on usage and the problems that we've had with it, that we were just going to avoid it. It's something we can revisit in the future. If, if modularity improves or, or Koji gets necessary changes where we can do external builds and things like that. But for now, Apple nine is just Apple nine and Apple nine next, no modular variant. Yep. I found it ironic that like two weeks after we decided that and rail engine said, look, it's hard maintaining. We had a modular problem in Apple eight and, Pearl went crazy and everything was building off the wrong Pearl. And mm -hmm. just to emphasize it. Okay, so this this is my graph. I this is what my graphs look like if I make them. Uh, <laughs> when when Apple 9 was released, we actually had 2,600, we'll just say 2,600 source packages. Um, that was there was more binary packages, but that's how many source packages on day zero of the release. So on this little graph, we have rel nine and that's when rel nine was released. That's what it was when it was when rel eight was released, we had zero packages and it took a full year before we had the same amount of packages that Apple nine had when we, when we released. Now, Apple when 9, Rel 9 released. Yeah, when Rel 9 released. Yeah, sorry. Apple 9 released back in, we'll just call it January, although it was sort of February. We launched Apple 9 with the, with the launch promotion of CentOS Stream 9. That's been really successful for us, uh, giving maintainers time to actually add their packages. You know, who knew? That works. That's good. They <laughs> want that. Yep. Um, Rel 7 actually did launch with 15 packages, oh, 17 packages. Um, but it took them a year and a half to get up to the same amount that we had on, on Rail 9. A lot of people have commented on that the slopes of these are are different. We want that to be steep and get steeper. Yep, keep being steeper. I tried putting them together. It looked horrible. <laughs> so You can tell the difference in growth rate on these. Yeah. So that was just – I like numbers – it was it was a fun little little thing. Oops. Oh, sorry, not oops, uh, but sort of oops. Atari eight hundred wrapped so around, <laughs> wrapped around. Um, these are some of the things that are in Apple Nine now. There's a lot more. Like we said, what are we up to? We're up to thirty two thousand. Mm -hmm. We have seventy two thousand packages, thirty two hundred source RPMs. Some of our favorites. <laughs> Some of the ones we found really easily usable logos from. Yeah, well, I like we got KDE. I'm a desktop person. KDE, ISWM. This is i3. Uh, and how do you pronounce that? Mate. 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 Yeah, it's not mate. Who, who knew? Um, XFCE. I thought we had one more. Anyway, oh, KDE. I didn't say KDE. Um, Look, the little fire guy there, that's the Lumina desktop. I oh, believe it has origins in BSD. So There it is. That's I knew there was one more desktop. And everybody's favorite, Atari 800, the Atari 800 emulator. I don't remember. What was the Dolphin one? Oh, that's an edit. Uh, I'm probably one of the five users that uses <laughs> that. <laughs> it came from Fermilab. That's why I always use it. Definitely big ones, KDE and XFCE and Chromium. Those were some of the things we heard the most noise about whenever Apple 9 first launched, where people said, yes, we need this. I can't use it until those are available. Yep. And anyway, it was it was exciting. We, we were excited about the Apple 9 launch and, uh, and getting it out there. 
Uh, Apple 8. We don't really have too much to say about Apple 8. Apple 8 is growing. Uh, we found a lot of the people, uh, as they built them for Apple 9, are actually backporting those things in Apple 8 and Apple 7. Mm -hmm. uh, Apple 7 is still growing a little bit. We can bring up that uh, the content set in RHEL's con Code Ready Builder repository. That's still growing. Uh, that's worked out really worked out well to help get more packages in Apple 8. When when RHEL 8 launched, there was a a good bit of packages, devil packages and things like that that weren't included. And I can understand the reasons behind doing that. The more things that RHEL ships, the more things that RHEL has to support. But then there 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 are certain packages that when they're left out and not available, that it makes it harder for Apple packages to get built. Uh, we've got a good, a decent process in place now for requesting those. You just file a Bugzilla. We have that all documented in the Apple uh, documentation. And so you can actually ask for those packages to be added to Rails CRB. That makes them available in the Apple 8 build route. And so that CRB content set is still growing with every minor release of Rails. And just as that as that gets fully populated, Apple maintainers that might have, that were going to ignore Apple 8 say, oh, I can actually build what I need to now. Yep. Just, just the comment that it's not automatically going into app into right, rel yeah. it's not an automatic it, yes it, it is up to the maintainers i think we the average we have about a 50 percent main 50 percent yes it's like 50 percent say yes about 25 percent say no for such and such a reason and then we are actually got about a 25 percent just sort of ghost in yes the wind. no or wait yeah one one other thing I'll say there is that it, it is up to the rail maintainer if they're going to if they're willing to ship it in in Code Ready Builder. Uh, Code Ready Builder packages are unsupported by rail, but there are, there sometimes are implications where a devil package getting shipped in CRB might upgrade a library that's in AppStream or Base OS to a higher compatibility level. So there's implications there that have to be evaluated. Yep. That's why it's not an automatic yes. Yep. Um. You want to I, talk about the uh, Apple Apple only sub package thing in there? I have a thing, and also if you're like me and you're impatient, um, <laughs> there there is a way to to add uh, the devel to Apple. It's meant to be temporary, but if they do say no, um, you can do it basically. But you've got to be willing to maintain it in step uh, with the rail things and. Uh, basically, you grab the source code from CRB. You make a, and well, Apple only package and spec Apple file. Apple only spec file. Name it with the package dash Apple, and um, publish it into Apple. The idea is you can take the rel spec file, strip out all of the packages sub packages that are built that are shipped in rel, and only deliver the sub packages that are missing either. Either if the rail maintainer says no to putting it in CRB, or if you're like Troy mentioned, if you're just impatient and want to have it there to start building against, uh, and then retire it if and when that package you need shows up in CRB. Yeah, because sometimes it uh, it's six months, and if you time it wrong, it's like nine months. I've I've had that, and I'm like, I don't want to wait nine months. I'll disagree with Troy. I'm usually a little more patient. <laughs> I look I look at that process as as the fallback if the rail maintainer says no. Um, it, yeah. There's nothing stop like you said. There's nothing stopping you from doing it proactively ahead of time, but creating a spec file like that is a non-trivial amount, tri non-trivial amount of work. You have to be careful not to not to accidentally step on any of the files that are shipped in the rail package, uh, rail packages, and make sure you don't ship any of those same. And then you have to actively pay attention if rail starts shipping one of those sub packages by Apple policy. You've got to get it out of Apple. Yep. So yeah, I I also watch all those packages <laughs> that I have. So. Um. CentOS Stream 8 is going away in 2024. That's in two years. Uh, with that Apple 8 Next. Yeah. Oh, I'm naming it Apple 8 Next, not Apple Next 8. Anyway, Apple 8 Next. Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. It's actually Apple Next in, in your thing. The things. Koji tags are Apple, Apple 8 Next. Yep. Oh, Apple 8 Dash Next. Then that's right. Anyway, uh, I think that's it for 8. 7. We only have one thing for seven. Mm -hmm. uh, Rail seven, not the extended support. The normal Rail seven goes away in two years, same as Stream Streamate. <laughs> Those of you on camera didn't hear the 
yay, go throughout their thing. Um, some people are groaning because they're like, that means I have to get off. But two years and the uh, Apple 7 will go away with it. It will be archived. Um, and I found out that they actually do a redirect. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't break your things. I didn't know that. I thought you had to manually do it. Mirror manager. Yeah. One other thing I'll add for this slide is that we saw in the earlier charts that Apple 7 is still the most popular artifacts that we produce. So, or that the community produces that we have in Apple, Apple 7. So one thing I would advise that if you're a heavy user of Apple 7, get involved. The, these are the most used packages, but probably get the least attention in bug reports and maintainers attention and things like that. Um, so get involved, help out. If there's a bug you're facing with an Apple 7 package, a lot of times the maintainer just might not know how to fix it, or they just they shipped it in Apple 7 and they primarily care about the Fedora package, or they've already moved on to Apple 8 and Apple 9 for, for their workloads. And so maintainers don't know about problems unless you tell them a lot of times. Yeah, backports are sort of hard sometimes. Sometimes you need the backport as opposed to bump to the thing. That's something else that's good to bring up with with Apple 7 packages, with Apple, pa Apple packages in general, we try to maintain them as if they were a rel package. That means a bit of a preference towards backporting fixes versus rebasing the new versions. That gets harder and harder over time. So there's, there's packages in Apple 7 that have outstanding CVEs for them that because it's all vol volunteer maintained packages, you can't mandate that someone spends their time working on it, getting do developing a backport to fix that CVE. We do have a process for Apple maintainers that if if they think if they if they're not able to create a backport for that fix, they can do an incompatible upgrade to a new version of that software as long as it builds against RHEL seven, in order to ship that CVE fix. We have a uh, we have a process in our documentation for that. It's called the incompat upgrade process, and whenever it's for security fixes, we the Apple steering committee basically just rub, rubber stamps it as like yes, of course we have to do this. But it's good to bring follow that process because it helps get other maintainers in the loop and helps coordinate rebuilds. Like if there's a library SO name change that has to be coordinated with other Apple packages that build against it. Yeah. When there there have been a couple people brought it up when it's not security fixes, and uh, they have to have a good reason usually for that right. because it's d disrupting others. Hey, talking about maintainers, let's go to the next slide. Um, we started tracking this just this year. Um, but it's, it's just a fun slide. We're up to, this not only says how many packages we got, but how many maintainers. So like Apple 9, we're up to 273. But it's, it's sort of interesting that there's sort of this baseline of 10 packages per maintainer. So that's one of the reasons why we're doing the survey, seeing if we can get more maintainers for Apple 9, 8, or 7. Apple 9's come down. It was a lot higher earlier on. Yeah, it used to be almost 14 packages per maintainer. We so, had people like Troy that were uh, uh, yeah, throwing well, the numbers out of whack with uh, <laughs> all the number, all the packages that he does maintain. Well, when you do KDE, it's like 380. <laughs> and, you know, that's sort of, to me, that's just one thing. But uh, so, yeah, the, the numbers are, are dropping. Um, but that's that's good. But... That means we want more more maintainers. So if you or your employer, which is great, um, there's there's some people here that I know that their employer pays them to to work with Fedora and whatever and Apple packages. Um, just talk to them and say, hey, can I? Your our software depends on this Apple package. How our about business depends on it? Yeah, there's some of them some our cases. business. Yeah. Um, Hey, wouldn't it be a good idea if we helped contribute to this community? Um, so anyway, that's one of the reasons why we, we've been tracking this. Above all else, it is a community repository. If Red, Hat want, if Red Hat wanted to pay people to work on these packages, they'd be in RHEL itself. So Apple is for all of us, for the whole community, for people to add what they want to use. Yep. Um, one of the things that happened, this is actually over a year ago, is we moved to Fedora Docs, but our most popular page, other than, than the front page, is uh, Apple Packages Requests. This is the URL. Basically, go to Fedora Docs, click on the Apple button, 
You need to get a tiny URL. I share, I share this link with people uh, multiple times a week. Uh, so this is, if you want to request a package for Apple, this is how you do it. The way that conversation normally goes is that someone in some chat channel or Reddit or social media, anything like that, someone will say, oh, well, I want to I want to try out this Nine-based distribution, CentOS Stream 9, Alma 9, RHEL 9, whatever it is. But I can't use it yet because this pack, you know, this package foo that I depend on isn't an Apple Nine yet. But it is an Apple Eight, so I'm going to use that one. If that's the case, then and the maintainer hasn't put it in Apple Nine yet, just ask. That's what this package request process is for. It kind of walks you through choose your own adventure style of how to how to file a bugzilla for it, how to ask request it from the maintainer. Uh, in some cases, you'll have packages that are in Fedora but aren't in aren't in any Apple branch at all yet. You have to do a few other steps in both a different different workflow in Bugzilla for that slightly for the, uh, for the product, but you can still get a hold of the same maintainer, make that request and let them know what you want to use it on. And uh, more often than not, that'll work out for you and get the package shipped. I'm just noticing our time. I'm going to be quicker. We started late. Yeah. We've, we're talking about uh, Apple and Red Hat. Um, Apple is based on the Fedora project. Fedora project is sponsored by Red Hat. Um, in the past year, actually it was like a year and a half ago, Red Hat finally started saying, hey, you know what? Apple's a good idea. Um, well, parts of The Red discussion Hat, happened a lot earlier. Yeah. They, Everything they, came to fruition finally in September of last year. We expanded CP, the community platform engineering group that we both work in. Several other people here do too. The that got expanded to include Apple as part of our responsibilities. Um, it was it was typically the same people doing helping Apple get stood up in the past, but it was always volunteer work previously. And uh, of course, everyone wanted that for a long time. Uh, rightfully, the management pushed back and said, "We'd love to take this on. Give us headcount to do it. We're not just taking on extra work for no for nothing." Uh, that finally you know came to pass in September. I'm actually on that sub team of the CPE team. Uh, I'm the team lead for Apple. Troy isn't, but he still works with Apple a lot. So I attend his meetings. He's, a lot. Our, he's our honorary team member. <laughs> um, two of the other things they did, besides, and just to clarify, he does not get paid to maintain packages. He gets paid to do infrastructure right. stuff like that. Not like, just infrastructure, but everything well, to help make Apple happen. Right? Yeah. If, like I said, if, if Red Hat wanted to maintain these packages, they'd put them in RHEL. Yep. But we want Apple to be vibrant and a growing community where people can come, you know, make sure the documentation is good, make sure the infrastructure stood up, figure out new ways to launch launch Apple early like we did with Nine. Um, things like that are totally within the scope of responsibilities, but we're not a package wish list service. Um, yep. We end up working on a lot of packages. Uh, some of the work that I've done is adding packages that I noticed were blocking a lot of other packages from getting done. So I've helped with some of those. But that's definitely not our primary responsibility. Yep. I do KDE because I love KDE. Um, and I was doing it way before. Sometimes before it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was, it's always been cool. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, the two other things I wanted to highlight is the Red Hat changed the policy on the develop packages going into CRB. We already talked about that. Another one that they've talked about, and it's, Still sort of new. Um, we're trying to see how many CRB packages, if you have a binary that's running in CRB, not just for building, but for, for the other. I have the example here of Poplar QT. You need it for KDE. The difference there isn't just binary, but runtime dependencies run, run, versus yeah, build time dependencies. Runtime dependency versus build time dependency. Go ahead and ask for that. Again, very much like the develop packages, it's not going to actually go into app stream but uh in this one it's not there yet but uh they are actually working on it specifically so, this is related to the thing that uh, was asked earlier about uh, crb not being enabled by default if you've got an apple package that has a runtime dependency on something from crb you may you may have added apple and then you try to install it and it doesn't work because you forgot to enable crb it's in our documentation but it's not something that is turned on by default so if you have one of those pack, one of those dependencies, the best thing to do is file a Bugzilla and see if it's it's a candidate. If the maintainer is willing to upgrade it from CRB to AppStream, yep. 
it's it's fewer packages and it's a little harder work for them but hey it's it's better than having things fail that was one of the other things that i wanted to say that changed with red hat said hey go ahead and do that the key the key thing is whether it's an apple package request or a crb request or an upgrade from crb to appstream request file a bug start the discussion talk to us and by us, we're putting Everybody. our, yeah, we're not only Apple Hat, but our Red Hats, too. Because actually, we both work for Red Hat, just for clarification. <laughs> um, the future. What do we see in the future? Apple 10. Apple 10. I can do math. <laughs> <laughs> so. I was just in a discussion yesterday where we talked about Apple 10. We Briefly. About, yeah, we talked about how <laughs> CentOS, so Apple, Apple 9 was able to launch almost six months early because of CentOS Stream 9. Um, I think that there's, you were in those meetings yesterday that I wasn't, but I imagine that we'll try to have more things ready earlier. Some of the stuff will be able to be reused from CentOS Stream 9 to CentOS Stream 10, and it won't have to be redone from scratch and figured out from the ground up. Yep. So it, it should it should go faster. May, maybe CentOS Stream 10 comes a little bit earlier. I don't know. I, I would well. Now, just because it being available doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good time to launch Apple 10 yet, but we would be able to. One yeah. thing we've discussed is having Apple 10 set up earlier than we did, but not doing a launch promotion for it until uh, maybe around the RHEL 10 beta time frame, just because that's when things start to solidify a little bit more. Uh, we don't want to yeah. have to have maintainers add a package to Apple, Apple 10 as soon as it's available, and then something like OpenSSL 3 happens, like what happened in, in 9. Yeah, uh, up in... Up until, this is my opinion, and we'd have to talk to the committee and stuff like that, but up until beta, things are just too much in transition for, for RHEL 10. But anyway, that's the future. Uh, that's still a little ways out. I think yeah. we might do well to, like we did with 9, uh, align that with the CentOS Stream 10 launch promotion, whatever that ends up looking like. Align that's, that at the, around the same time. That sounds like a good idea. Because that's sort of what we'll be basing it off of. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing in the future, and this is short-term future, and this is actually almost done, but I still have it in my notes. Uh, we're starting a new retiring procedure. Not new. We're more clarifying it. We're going to try to do something similar to Fedora's orphaning so that if, you know what, I'm a package maintainer. My job has changed. I don't want to maintain this package in Apple anymore. Instead of just retiring it, which technically you can just do right now, um, put you know send out an email, or or better, uh, it was Michelle I think that that's uh, set up a a Pagure thing. We're gonna have documentation for this anyway. This procedure is changing uh, so that you, we can do something similar to orphaning. We can't do orphaning just because it's. It doesn't. We've already talked through that. <laughs> that. That retiring thing you mentioned. Fedora's policy around package retirement is that you can retire in rawhide and a branched release before it hits the beta, I believe. Uh, but after it's in a stable release, it should stay in that stable mm, release of that's Fedora. Right. That's only maintained for thir you know about thirteen months. Obviously, that that makes sense for you know volunteer maintainers. But with Apple, those packages are expected to be around a lot longer. It's hard to say that. Hey volunteer maintainer, we demand that you maintain this Apple package for 10, 10. 10 years. That's not really feasible, not nice either. So Apple, the policy for retiring package is a little easier there. With Apple, you can basically retire it at any point. Um, some of those reasons might be that you just can't maintain it anymore. Sometimes Apple packages get added to RHEL, and that's something that's really good to see. That, that's, that says that enough RHEL customers have said, this is an important package to me. I want Red Hat to support it. And when that happens, because Apple extra packages is in the name, it's only additional packages. If it goes into Rail and CentOS, then it has to come out of Apple. Yep. Anyway, that, that process is being reworked, redocumented. Um, and I think, yeah, that, that's all I had for future questions and answers. And I do have a slide for KDE, but uh, you can go look at it when you see the slides or if you can want to look at it real quick. <laughs> Questions and answers. We have a question. Uh, so a couple of things on the internet. Um, uh, there was a question about what's 
Oh. Okay. Well, okay, real quick, uh, Rail 8 and Rail 9 have two main repos. They're called Base OS and App Stream. Uh, hopefully those are Base OS is sort of the core things and then App Stream. And Code Ready Builder, I did not pick that name. Um, or CRB, which is what the thing is, uh, is a bunch of packages that RHEL does not support, but um, a lot of them are development packages. So they're supporting the binary, but they're not really supporting the development packages. Uh, there is a few others like the Poplar QT, which was binary that I think accidentally got in there. Uh, so anyway, it's a third repository that if you're running RHEL or one of the derivative clones, I like calling them clones, um, you can enable the CRB repo. Fun fact, code ready is a trademark term. So in CentOS, CRB doesn't stand for anything. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm not a lawyer. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, that, the previous question was, what is CRB? Okay, so, uh, the question is Apple's Super Next versus ELN. Um, actually, there's ELN Extras. That's that. That's that. Um, Easy it, answer. It's not all the packages. If a, a maintainer, like, okay, I've, I've done it because I also been working on ELN. That's, that's my day job. Uh, if they want to see what packages are going to get pulled in, they can do an ELN. Uh, extras package workload. Thing. Workload. That's the name. Thank you. I thought Adam was going to fill that in for me, um, and and it will show what packages it, it brings in. So technically, there is uh, there's still some work being done on that, and but we don't expect you to be using ELN as a as a stable thing anyway for testing. Sure, for <laughs> but there there is sort of an uh, Apple X super, super next. And just for uh, ELN, I forget what it exactly stands for, but the idea there is it's a constant rebuild of Fedora Rawhide with rel macros and other things like that. Kind of a, it's a, a way to preview the next version of the next major version of rel way before anything else happens. Uh, kind of answers the question. What if we branched the next branch of CentOS stream off from, from Fedora today. It's a way to look at that constantly. Yeah, uh, I'm part of that team and it's, the question we were asked was, uh, can we branch Rail 10 right now? And we said, yes, it's right there. Um, so if you wanna see what Rail 10 looks like, now granted it's gonna change, but that's what it, that's what it looks like right now is, is ELN. Uh, that's also on Fedora Docs, Click on the ELN button. Any other from the chats? The internet has done. That's oh, David wow. done. Bold statement. <laughs> um, on CRB, uh, one thing I noticed when requesting stuff to get it from CRB, there seems to be some confusion among the maintainers where I definitely got a pushback a few times with people saying that CRB is only for development. And whenever asking somebody to do this strictly for development, I, I actually uh, have a bunch of back and forth, so I don't know if there's something we can do to make it clear or uh, prices up somewhere that we can find people to work or something like that. You can you can ping Josh, who I, I noticed is not there so anymore. The, the, the question <laughs> is is that those requests for pack, adding packages to CRB, uh, community members have seen a good bit of confusion from the rail maintainer side of you know what that's for, when they can add stuff to it, how they need to go about adding it to it. Um, Yes, there, there's confusion there. Processes are new, and it's something we need to work on and get better at. There's really there's no excuse here. Uh, I've helped guide some rail maintainers, giving them the right internal documentation of how they go through that process. A lot of times, the rail maintainers perfectly willing to do it. They're also the Fedora maintainer. They understand having these things available. They understand the support implications. They look through where things are, um, and a lot of times they say, "Sure, I'd love to do this. How?" 
and they're asking yeah. inter internally in private comments and yeah uh, there's all documentation for it and we just need to build that knowledge and um, get people more familiar with it i think yeah point if if you do that point point one mean carl or or brian to that um because it used to be the answer was no and then like you said about a year year and a half ago it changed and not everybody's got the memo yep. um Rail's a big ship to turn, and it turns slowly. Yep. We, we noticed a couple of places in our internal development guide that we still have like old documents and stuff. So. Oh, okay. So we still got to work through some kind of documentation for For those that didn't hear, it was we've seen some internal documentation that's pointing to old stuff. So documentation's hard. Yes, yeah. because it stays. <laughs> Any other questions? I think we're what's standing between them and lunch. So what's for lunch is the next question. What's for lunch? Anything I else? like food. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.